This presentation is on BOD removal kinetics, and an understanding of this topic is essential for designing wastewater treatment works, especially waste stabilisation ponds. All the equations can be applied to the removal of other parameters, such as nitrogen and E. coli. The slide shows the basic verbal equation for the removal of organic matter in wastewater. Oxygen is needed for this, and bacteria use the oxygen to oxidise the organic matter, and they do this to produce new bacterial cells. It's simply not possible to quantify the organic matter in the wastewater directly, unless you have a total organic carbon meter, but these are very expensive and very few labs have one. Instead, we express the concentration of organic matter in terms of the oxygen used to oxidise it. If this oxygen is used by bacteria, then this oxygen demand is called the biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD for short. An alternative is to oxidise the organic matter with a strong acid, usually a boiling acid dichromate solution, and then we call the oxygen demand the chemical oxygen demand, or COD. The COD of a wastewater is always greater than its BOD because the COD is due to both the biodegradable and the non-biodegradable compounds present whereas the BOD is due only to the biodegradable compounds. Both COD and BOD are expressed as concentrations, usually milligrams per litre or grams per cubic metre. Strictly speaking, the unit should be grams of oxygen per cubic metre. Most commonly, we use a first-order equation to represent BOD removal. The equation in its differential form is dL by dt equals minus K1L, where L is the BOD in milligrams per litre, T is time, usually in days, and K1 is the first order rate constant for BOD removal, and it has dimensions of reciprocal time, usually day to the minus one. This equation, which is valid for aerobic reactors in which oxygen is not limiting, basically says that the rate of BOD removal, dL by dt, at time t, is proportional to the amount of BOD, L, still to be removed at that time. We can integrate this equation to L equals L naught e to the minus K1t, where L0 is the amount of BOD present at t equals zero, often called the ultimate BOD, or BODU. If Y is taken as L0 minus L, where Y is the amount of BOD removed at time t, then Y equals L0 into 1 minus e to the minus K1t. And if t equals 5 days, then Y5 is the amount of BOD removed in 5 days, or the amount of oxygen the bacteria have used in 5 days. This is a basic concept, because when we talk about BOD, we are usually referring to the five-day BOD, in fact at 20 degrees C, or BOD5. These two graphs are typical BOD curves. The one on the left is the YT curve, showing how the BOD is removed, that's the same as how the bacteria use the oxygen. And the one on the right is the LT curve, showing how much BOD remains at any time T. The YT curve starts at zero, and the LT curve starts at L0. The two curves are showing the same thing, of course, as Y equals L0 minus L. The ratio BOD5 to BODU, or Y5 over L0, is given by Y5 over L0 equals 1 minus e to the minus K1 times 5. For normal untreated domestic or municipal wastewater, K1 is about 0.23 reciprocal day, so the ratio is about two-thirds. We normally measure BOD5, so we know that the ultimate BOD will be about one and a half times the five-day BOD. K1 is really a reflection of bacterial activity, so it will vary with temperature. To describe this, we use an Arrhenius-type equation, usually of the form K1t equals K120 times phi to the power t minus 20, where K1t is the value of K1 at t degrees, K120 its value at 20 degrees, and phi is an Arrhenius constant, and for BOD removal, it's often in the range 1.03 to 1.09, and typically about 1.05. The equations we've developed so far are batch culture equations. That is to say, they're for a given volume of wastewater, which receives no more wastewater, and there's no wastage of wastewater from it. But wastewater treatment plants are continuous flow reactors, not batch reactors as they receive an inflow of wastewater all the time, and there's a corresponding outflow of treated wastewater. In a reactor, there are three types of hydraulic flow regime, complete mixing, plug flow, and dispersed flow. 
The first two are ideal flow regimes and are never totally achieved in practice. We'll look first at complete mixing. With this ideal flow regime, the influent is completely and instantaneously mixed with the reactor contents, and this means that the effluent from the reactor is identical in every respect to the reactor contents. So if we have a reactor of volume V, receiving an influent flow Q of wastewater, which has a BOD of Li, and if the effluent BOD is Le, then we can do a BOD mass balance across the reactor, which simply says that what goes in equals what's been removed plus what goes out. The BOD that goes in is LiQ grams per day. The BOD that goes out is LeQ grams per day. And the BOD that's removed in the reactor is K1LeV grams per day. So LiQ equals LeQ plus K1LeV. We can rearrange this equation as shown on the slide, and then writing V over Q as theta, the mean hydraulic retention time, we get Le equals Li over 1 plus K1 theta. The other ideal flow regime is plug flow, and this can be visualised as a very long, narrow reactor, like a river for example. And for this type of reactor, the effluent is not the same as the reactor contents, as these vary along the reactor length. Another way of looking at a plug flow reactor is to imagine the wastewater in packets travelling discreetly and uniformly along the reactor, as if on a conveyor belt. There's complete mixing within each packet, but no inter-packet mixing. Thus BOD removal in each packet is just like removal in a batch reactor, and so we can use the equation for L that we developed earlier, but write it in terms of Li and Le, thus Le equals Li times e to the minus K1t. In reality, of course, we don't have either of these two ideal flow regimes. We have what's called dispersed flow, and dispersed flow reactors are characterised by a dispersion number, given the symbol delta. The value of delta is between zero and infinity. In a plug flow reactor, delta equals zero, and in a completely mixed reactor, delta equals infinity. In dispersed flow reactors, the value is somewhere between zero and infinity, and BOD removal is described by the vaner wilhelm equation, shown on the slide. The equation may look a bit complicated, but it's not really. This slide shows the Tiamoti chart for dispersed flow reactors. On the y-axis, we have the dimensionless product K1theta, and on the x-axis, on a log scale, the percentage BOD remaining. For plug flow, that is for delta equals zero, we have a straight line, and for all other values of delta, we have slightly curved lines. Several lines are on the chart, and the corresponding dispersion number is adjacent to each. If we look at 20% BOD remaining on the x-axis and go up, we find that the value of K1theta is somewhere around 0.7 or so for plug flow, and more or less exactly 4 for complete mixing. This might suggest that plug flow reactors are far more efficient than completely mixed reactors, and most people hold to this view. It's certainly true if the value of K1 is the same in both types of reactor, both treating, of course, the same wastewater, but this may not generally be the case. For dispersion numbers less than 2, and with dispersion numbers 2 is actually quite close to infinity, the second term in the denominator of the vaner wilhelm equation is small and can be ignored, so that for most reactors the equation becomes Le over Li equals 4A over 1 plus A all squared, all times e to the power 1 minus A all over 2 delta, where A equals as before the square root of 1 plus 4k1 theta delta. We can measure delta from tracer studies, or just for waste stabilisation ponds, we can get an estimate of delta from von Sperling's equation, which says that delta is the reciprocal of the pond's length to breadth ratio. Tracer studies are done like this. At t equals zero, a concentrated slug of the tracer, usually a dye such as rhodamine WT, is poured into the pond as shown on the slide for the full-scale facultative pond at Vidigera in Portugal. Then the concentration of the dye in the effluent is measured for 2 to 3 V over Q retention times. The results can then be fed into a computer program to calculate delta. With facultative and maturation ponds, we often find that delta is roughly between 0.4 and 0.8, 
that is, about halfway between plug flow and complete mixing, which is what you'd sort of expect. This slide shows four plots of dimensionless concentration against dimensionless time. Dimensionless concentration is C E over C star, where C E is the dye concentration in the effluent, and C star is the mass of dye added in the slug divided by the pond volume. Dimensionless time is T E, the time at which C E is measured, divided by the V over Q retention time, theta. The four plots are for complete mixing, or delta equals infinity, at top left, for plug flow, or delta equals zero, at bottom right, and for a high degree of dispersion, delta equals 0 0.2 at top right, and a low level of dispersion, delta equals 0 0.002 at bottom left. With complete mixing, C E over C star equals 1 at T equals 0. Thereafter the dye is washed out exponentially. In complete contrast with plug flow, all the dye appears in the effluent at the same time, and this time is theta, the V over Q retention time, when the dimensionless time ratio, Te over theta, equals 1. For the low level of dispersion, some dye appears in the effluent before Te over theta equals 1, and some after, but most appears pretty close to when Te over theta equals 1. For the high degree of dispersion, a small amount of dye appears almost immediately. It then builds up to a peak, after which it decreases, not quite exponentially, but almost so. This is the type of curve we most commonly encounter with waste stabilisation ponds.